Okay, stop me if you've heard this one before. You just got done creating your character for a campaign that one of your friends is supposed to be running for you. And for once you're going to be a player. You're all excited because you got your abilities all set up, your equipment all set up, your backstory's even finished, and you're ready to play the game and be the hero that you always wanted to be, but never could be in real life. So you go over, and you're excited, and you're gonna play this game, and then you quickly realize that that's not the case. But maybe, just maybe we're just starting off slow and then I'll get some more notoriety later on. But nope. No matter the amount of power, skill, knowledge, or experience you've gained, the NPCs will still treat you the way they did at day one. And that, my friends, is no good. Salutations everyone and welcome to the second episode of Saber Stories with me and host Saber TC. Last time we talked about the source of my love of storytelling and this time I figured I would tell you more of a funny story. Well it's kind of funny ha <laughs> ha and the way that I was frustrated at the time but now I realize they do make good stories for later. Although it doesn't change the fact that it was super annoying when it happened. And what I'm talking about, if you couldn't tell from the intro, are the times that I played as a player but didn't have the most easy of times. I either got my butt kicked, got disrespected, or just simply tossed aside. So, without further ado, allow me to regale you with these tales. A little backstory before we begin. The GM for most of these games was a friend of mine who I will call Loki, and the name is befitting of him, and you'll see why. Um, two of my friends used to play in those games as well quite frequently. One uh, who I'm going to call Poultry, and the other I'm going to call Arf. If you're watching this video, you know who you are. For this first story, I was playing the role of Atticus. A Nephilim knight who had just infiltrated a bandit camp led by a Skyrim dark elf by the name of Magnus, played by my friend Arf. But I wasn't alone. I was accompanied by an NPC elven ranger named Zavira, um, an NPC farmer named Bob, who was the brother to Fern, a human soon to be mage that was played by my friend poultry anyway we had just snuck in under the cover of night following them back to their hideout after they just had assassinated one of their own to prevent their secrets from falling out there are plenty of them swarming the place and our objective was to beat magnus vivira had the idea of just announcing our presence and charging in which she did by throwing one of their bombs back at them when it had just dropped over here by accident. Yeah, we were loud and proud, so there was no turning back now. Vera charged in and started taking Magnus on, and I charged in taking on whatever people I could. Because of my heavy armor, I could take a lot of hits, but I was kind of slow, but still kind of quick for moving in heavy armor. I had picked up the weapon of the bandit we, that was assassinated, and started using it. It was a gladius along with my uh, arming sword. And so I was just tearing through these folks, not killing them, but just, you know, knocking them out. Until I was stopped by an interesting fellow. He was the right hand to Magnus and his name was Narvi. Now this name has a stigma around it for me because whenever I hear the name Narvi now, I can't trust it. Anyway, and you'll find out why. So continuing on, we continue to lay waste the battlefield as Bob started to loot the corpses and Fern did the same. Fern trying to set up obvious traps that obviously didn't work unless you had only maybe one brain cell and even then it wasn't a guarantee. But anyway, um, with my fight, like I said, I was going against Narvi. He was very quick and he did not unsheathe his sword from his scabbard, but his pits were so powerful it could crack the ground beneath him. So I decided 
I narrowly dodged the first one. I need to strip myself of this armor. So I did. And then we continued. I would like to say it was an epic clash of blades where we were evenly matched, but I tried to hit him and then tried to disarm him of his weapon, but then he ended up breaking my hand in the process. When I finally got one hit on him, because I was lucky, he uh, ended up summoning this like shadow force of some kind. This weird black ichor started coating his body and runes started to form on his skin. He became greatly charged with power and his purple aura emanated, striking dread and fear into many people that was around. So I was pretty nervous. So he began to start uh, attacking me full force once again and I could only dodge. I, at this moment I couldn't really attack. Uh, I was pretty defenseless. And, but a good thing I dropped my armor, otherwise I'd be taking these hits and the armor wouldn't be able to absorb it. But eventually, I tried to trip him up or try to do something and uh, he ended up breaking my foot while kicking me into a tree. And this, and while I was lying on, my, on the ground trying to figure out how to fight with one hand and one foot, this, is a, this was the time that Loki decided to ask me, um, what I wanted to do. So I said, hmm, I wish I had some healing potions right now. And guess what? I apparently had him on me this entire time, but he didn't tell me at the beginning I had him on me. And I couldn't just assume with this guy, because you'll figure out why as we get with the story. There's a pattern here. I didn't find out until after I got my butt whooped, because I wasn't able to keep up with this demon guy. Good thing was I was saved and uh, by getting warped out of there along with the others to who knows where and um, I know where but uh, if you want me to continue the story just let me know but uh, when we got to our destination I like I said create the healing potion and apparently I had one on me at the time which somebody didn't tell me I drank it up and it was a cool description of how it worked but Still, I wish I had known I had two of them earlier. Anyway, that was the first time I got my butt kicked. The second time was in the second story where he roped my one-on-one -on -one in school to playing with us. Um, and so we were all friends in this village and Narvi was once again in our party. Oh, I did not like Narvi. This time, however, because of the negotiation skills of my one-on-one, -on -one, we got more of a D&D style game. I didn't say anything at the time because I didn't know what D&D was. Uh, I heard about it, but I just never really knew how it worked. I knew it was complicated, but I just didn't have the time to sit down and learn it yet. Anyway, um, we ended up um, was gone. So we ended up grouping up and going out of this village and of course my one-on-one -on -one, because he was Loki Senpai got a lot of the benefits. He was the son of the mayor, had all the money, could get whatever he wanted. I was a lonely peasant training to be a knight. Um, me uh, what was it called? Um, Arf's character was a um, prolific uh, huntsman for the town. And as well as Narvi, he was even the captain of the guard, I think. And then, um, and even Fern was, or even uh, Poultry's character was like well off in terms of being a farmer. <laughs> so we decided to team up and adventure out um, for whatever reason. And on our adventure, we came across a cave and footsteps. Narvi wanted to follow the footsteps and uh, the two other members of our party had stayed with the forces because they couldn't get over here. So we had four members in total at this point and uh, what was it called? My one-on-one -on -one wanted to uh, investigate the cave. So um, Arf went with him. However, I had to go with Narvi to make sure he didn't get into trouble or he had turned into some type of uh, demon lord all of a sudden. 
followed the footsteps all the way to a uh, mammoth corpse, and we heard a roaring at the same time. We thought at first it was this beast, but apparently something had slayed the beast before we got a chance to get there. Turns out... It was a giant. Once again, I had shed my arm, my heavy armor because I didn't want to be weighed down. And luckily I did, otherwise I might have died. Anyway... Um... We started engaging the giant the best we could. Um, Narvi and I. Narvi got all his weapons stuck in the giant this time and couldn't still kill it. I tried to slash at it, but because we were using a dice method that was completely determined by Loki, uh, whether it was a good roll or a bad roll, um, and he didn't say beforehand, I was not able to hit the thing the way I wanted to. In fact, I got my sword stuck in his foot at a certain point, and I had to get it back. Try to throw my sword at his eye. Didn't work. And then I was disarmed. Don't know why I had the knack or the uh, urge to throw my weapon. Wasn't very effective. Anyway. Uh, yeah, we were getting our butt kicked by this giant. The only one having an okay time was my one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, until a druid and a ranger showed up and killed it way easier than we could. And that was the second time I got my butt whooped. Now the third time I got my butt whooped, and I'm going to save some of these butt whoop stories late for later, was in the most recent game we had tried to do uh, during school, uh, when I was in high school. My one-on-one -on -one was a part of it, I was a part of it, and poultry was a part of it. It was a D&D-esque like style, but it wasn't with a whole bunch of dice, it was just with some dice and there was no complete system, it was made up on the fly, so yeah. Anyway, long story short, I was playing a human, um, a human warrior, and uh, our friends just got kidnapped, the carnival that we worked for just got wrecked by some barbarians, and so we had to follow the barbarians up a mountain to try to get them back. Little did we know that the Barbarian's chief was some type of elemental chief or whatever. It was like, he wasn't, he was human, but he could summon stone to encase his skin that was harder than steel. I don't know what it was or what my friend was smoking, but he wasn't sharing. Anyway, we ended up fighting and I tried to free our more powerful friend Percival along with his companion that was uh, tied up at the time too. But he was berating me because he was like, why didn't you wait for them to, uh, to go down the mountain? I was like, because they were resting, which they were at the time. They just seemed to get done with the battle, so I decided to attack them while they were at their weakest. Instead of waiting for them to rest and go down the mountain. Because <laughs> even though they are at the bottom of the mountain, they could run up before we have a chance to get them. Plus, most of us were... Melee fighters, so I don't know what Percival was talking about. Anyway, Percival got freed and he showed me a new trick called um, Rock Wrecker. And um, I started using this skill to try to beat up the uh, golems that were being summoned by the Barbarian Chief. My friend uh, Poultry tried to distract the Barbarian Chief by tackling him and giving a bear hug, but he ended up getting picked up by the head and getting thrown literally to the sun. More explanation later on if I ever continue the story. Anyway, we started fighting through these people and I tried to hide in the spring that was at the top of the mountain at some points to avoid uh, the trees that were being trees and rocks that were being flung everywhere. Eventually made my way to the chieftain and tried to hit his knee to get him uh, crippled at least with rock wrecker. But apparently, his armor was not stone, but made of some type of steel, or at least as hard as steel. So Rock Wrecker didn't work, which I thought was BS. Anyway, um, we ended up having to retreat after uh, Poultry came back, and I had to pick up all my friends who had fell in battle and run down the mountain as fast as we could. <laughs> And that was the third time. Have you noticed that um, I can never just win or at least get the upper hand? It always has to be 
going downhill and then have to escape. That's always how it, it goes. It's never that way, but anyway. I know it sounds like I'm complaining, but it does make for some funny stories. Um, the last, all those games were pretty fun to play, despite not being the most uh, empowering, if you will, for for me. But even still, I do appreciate the um, the craziness that went on, and he, and the only thing I would wish is on him to learn to let the players win every once in a while to give them a little bit more of a morale boost and for me to learn that sometimes the players have to get a dose of humility in order to justify their uh, rewards. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is everybody has their own way of playing a game and before you jump into one make sure you know the tone of the game and the person and people that you're playing with and that you mash, mesh pretty well and, if you, and even if you don't try to give it a try maybe you'll like the character better than the player and that's okay too you know or if you just don't like anything then it's fine too but um yeah uh if you're still watching uh, at this point in the video, thank you so much. If you want to hear the extensions of those uh, stories, um, I'd be willing to tell them. Just let me know in the comments below and give me a like. Um, it helps out and lets me know that you actually did like the video. Anyway, um, besides that, you can give me a follow on Twitch because uh, I'll tr try to stream very, very soon. Uh, I'm going to try to work out a schedule, and I'm working on a couple of things in the background, so it's going to be really great. Um, and if, of course, if you want to support me, you can do so through Streamlabs or PayPal. The links and information will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will talk to you all next time. And don't forget to let me know what you want to see next. Anyway, this is your host, SaberTC. Signing out. Stay sharp, everyone. And I love you all.